Hey there, it's Kathy with the Gyroscope Farm and the Traveling Homesteader and today we're going to be doing some peach canning and I'm actually going to show you three different ways to prepare ke uh, peaches for the winter. They all start right here. So I am outside as you can hear with my chickens um, or what I jokingly call the staff <laughs> uh, who provide great eggs by the way. Um, I am outside with my outdoor burner, my two burner uh, stove going on, and I am preparing um, some hot water to blanch my peaches. And all three of the things that I'll be showing you today require the skins to be peeled off or blanched off. Now you can peel off the skins off your peaches if you don't want to do it this way. You just have to be careful not to overcook your peaches for any of the steps that we're going to be doing. So. What I've done is I have my little um, handy dandy spider here uh, to help me uh, get the peaches out. I have my freshly picked peaches that I will essentially place in uh, at when, the, when it's boiling a little bit more. I'll place these in. I'll have them in for about 30 seconds to a minute, pull them out, put them in cold water, and then peel. From there, I'll then put them in um, a, a, water, a water bath. There's a couple of different ways that you can have um, your peaches not turn yellow once they're peeled. And one way is using vitamin C, which is also known as ascorbic acid. Now, this one happens to be the, um, the 1000 milligram pill form. But if you get the 500 milligram chewables, the kind that tastes like orange, you use six of those tablets per one gallon of water in a pot. Um, so if you had two gallons of water that you were putting your peaches into, you would use 12 um, vitamin C tablets crushed up and mixed into that concoction. The other option is to be able to use citric acid powder that you can buy directly from the store. If you use one teaspoon per one gallon of water, that's another way to do it. Or some other people end up liking to use lemon juice. And liquid lemon juice is pretty good. Um, that one is a little bit different amount that you can use. Usually I'd say about half a cup to two thirds of a cup of lemon juice to one gallon of water. Any one of those options is a great option to help you uh, not have your peaches turn yellow. Um, and so for any of the three items that we're doing today, either frozen, um, frozen peaches, uh, pie fill or even pie filling, but today we're going to be doing canned peaches or even peach jams or preserves. You don't want your peaches to turn uh, brownish in any of those instances. So using vitamin C or powdered ascorbic acid or even lemon juice would be a great option. So using now that our water has gotten to boiling, I'm just going to place a couple in my pot um, and just let it let this a couple of them go in for a couple minutes. Now with this, um, you may have noticed I just put them directly in without rinsing or anything. Um, by doing this, it, we're shocking them a little bit or blanching. Um, but once we get that done, we're going to actually take not only the skin off, but any of the bad parts of the peach. Peaches are really prone to getting bruised easily so you want to make sure you only have the freshest of the flesh um, left in any of the items we're making today. So now that we've let this set in there for a little bit um, we want to just make sure a little bit longer I think but you also want to be able to use um, fully ripened not overripe not underripe, but just the right ripeness of peaches um, for any of our products today. Um, and by having it just right, you'll have the best, freshest product um, for when you open it up in the winter. Um, but also, you want to make sure that if it's overripe, um, then you take out all of the bad parts because you run the risk of having, if one little piece is wrong, then the rest of the batch that will also go wrong. So now that those are taken out, um, I'm actually gonna, I'm gonna use the citric acid. And I'm just gonna put some citric acid right now in my, um, 
in my big pan. I'm going to mix it up just slightly. Um, and that way I have it all ready for a while. I'm um, kind of cutting up my peaches. Um, and I will get one batch more in, um, kind of to get ahead a little bit. And what I've done is I've gotten it so that I'm set up to kind of process a couple of things. And I want to be able to get ahead, so I'll be doing this in steps for you, and you'll see kind of how I do it. Um, but first we're going to start out with the blanching, then I'll go um, and show you how to can them. But, um, and this is actually, once you set up this part of blanching, you can do a whole host of things really in short order, which is kind of the, 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 the good part to canning. You never want to take too much time because we're always so busy doing other things. Um, and we usually have a lot to process in a day. So now that we have this next batch done, um, I am going to turn this off for right now um, until I get my next batch um, ready to go. But there we go. We're going to take that out and put it in the cold water. Now if you overcook this and the peaches in this step, um, you may not want to use them in canning, um, the canning like sliced peaches, but you could probably use them for um, your jams. And that's one thing that we'll do as well. So I'm going to use my favorite knife and get one of the first peaches that I pulled out. And you can see you just can literally stream off the, or pull off the, um, the skin of the peaches, which is really a heck of a lot easier than trying to peel them um, without. Um, I ended up trying to do this batch uh, another time just by peeling peeling them off without blanching and it took a lot more time uh, a lot more effort and then didn't leave me with as much um, meat so to speak on the peach so now that I've gotten the skins all off um, you might notice that there's some bruising on my peach and I'm gonna cut that off and I, I don't want any bruised parts uh, then I'm just gonna slice it in a way and have it with I'm gonna uh, create sections you can have sliced or your peaches in half or you can have them sliced um, either way is fine I I prefer to have sliced peaches over halved peaches um, and then basically you're gonna Take your sections off your peaches um, and put them in your uh, prepared uh, bath, water bath, uh, so they, do, they don't turn yellow. Now, another thing to make to mention now is that the peaches that you get, I happen to get mine at a local um, peach, or, peach orchard. Um, they grow not only peaches, but pears and corn and other things. Uh, called There's a place called Dietering Orchards, great place local to be in Harrisburg, Oregon. Um, but they have a variety of peaches that are good uh, for canning. They suggest um, Suncrest or Early, Al early Alberta or Alberta. Um, it's peach season now. It's the earlier part of the peach season. So you can wait a little bit longer to still get several good varieties. Now, the recipes that I am using are uh, through the Oregon State Extension Service. Uh, master food preservers program and I like to go through them because they do offer good home um, canning uh, recipes and things that you can can on your own that are that are tried and true and have done, kind of done the job so as you can see I'm going to continue to do my peaches and um, I want to make sure that all the bad spots are come off as you can see this is a pretty nice peach no real problems with it um, but I'm gonna continue to do this part and once you have gotten this down you can actually just go and freeze them this is the easiest next step would be to freeze these and you can flash freeze these like I pointed out with my um, blackberries in the last video you can flash freeze um, peaches in the same way by laying them out on a pan 
and just putting them in your freezer. And that way they don't stick together in the process. And so you, when you flash freeze them, lay them on a cookie sheet with, a, um, with either a layer of plastic or parchment, put them in your freezer, wait about two hours until they're fully frozen, pull them out and put them in quart bags or whatever size bags that you prefer. Depending on the size of your family, you might even put them in a gallon size bag. But we're going to wait until we get to the next part. So at this point with the cut peaches, you can start your freezing. But I'm going to do a couple more and show you about canning them in jars. So we'll be right back. Hey there, so welcome back to this next portion of our video. So as I started before, I have um, sectioned out my peaches. I've blanched them, peeled the skins off, and now at this point I can, the first thing I can do is freeze. And so I can flash freeze them by just laying them out on a sheet pan, a cookie sheet or something like that, um, lined with parchment paper, put them in the freezer, and then freeze them for about two hours, take them out and put them in any size bag that you want to use. You can do them individually um, for individual portions for things like smoothies or um, whatever you might use peaches for individually. Um, or you can then go to this next part and this is where canning is going to come into play. And so I have my water bath canner going. Um, it's, it's heating up now. But I wanted to point out um, some differences in canning jars that you can use depending on your preference. I'm going to be using a wide mouth jar for putting these peaches into pints. You can also use um, the regular mouth jars. It just depends on your preference. Just for ease of getting in and out, I'm going to use the wide mouth jars. Um, but like I said, it depends on what you prefer and what you have. Now remember, um, there's the two parts to the canning lid. Um, there's the metal ring, but then there's also the lid, the flat lid. Now, whether it's wide mouth like this or the regular mouth, these rings are hard to come by right now alone. Just since the pandemic, many people have gotten into uh, canning. And so these are what's kind of hard to come by um, just outright to purchase. You can usually purchase these on their own. But then these lids are also somewhat hard to come by um, because they're, um, they're kind of rationing them now. Ball has been um, producing them, but there's a new company that's kind of taken up the slack. And I haven't used their product yet, but I do have them. I want to say they're, they're called PAR. Um, but I've gotten mixed reviews from other people on how they are. So you may need to get um, a new set of jars, lids, and rings um, at the store that come in a set of 12, um, a case of 12, in either wide mouth, um, regular mouth, and um, they come in half pints, pints, and quart jars. Sometimes you can eat it, and depending on what you need to, you can also get gallon size or half gallon size. Um, usually those are for more for like what I think of as um, like grape juice or apple cider or that sort of thing. But for today, we're going to be using these, and basically, there's a couple of different ways you can um, pack, you might say, peaches. And there's the raw pack, and then there's also the um, hot, hot pack. I'm going to go with the raw pack, because essentially it's just taking them as I cut them and putting them in the jar. And I'll be using a what's called very light syrup that I have already here on my... Um, stove top too. I have six and a half cups water and it's going to be to just three quarters of a cup of sugar. Now this will help um, kind of maintain the the peaches and you can have more or less sugar and I'll include some recipes below um, so you can see um, what you might be interested in. I'm wanting to have a little bit less sugar so that way um, that's why I want the very light sugar and I kind of also don't like um, my peaches too sugary. So with that in mind, I'm actually going to start heating up this water and I'm going to be putting some of my jars in my um, canner to help, um, to help them uh, kind of heat up and to sterilize. 
And so um, by doing this, it allows my canning jars to kind of warm up to the temperature, but it also helps to sterilize them. So we want to make sure that we, we kind of don't get our glass jars too, I guess we want to temper them, you might say, so then they don't break in the process. Um, so once we have all these things going, we can start packaging our peaches into our jars. And that's kind of the easy part. So when we have the raw pack, that simply means we're not going to cook the peaches anymore. They end up getting somewhat cooked in the canning process. So that's why I've chosen not to do the um, hot pack. Hot pack simply means you cook beforehand, you put them in the jars, and you then can them, which essentially you're cooking them again. So that's why I've chosen not to do it that way. And another item that you can um, hot pack are green beans. And when I tried it with green beans, I found that the green beans got soggy and usually that they're a kind of a crisp item. And I just didn't want to overcook my peaches. I kind of like a certain texture. So that's why I've chosen to go with the raw pack um, today with the peaches. And um, hopefully they will turn out well. And like I said, I'll, be, I'll put some links below for you to kind of follow some of the um, recipes that we have here. So with this in mind, I'm going to allow these to kind of heat up a little bit and then we'll start packing. Okay, so now that these are, are all getting heat, heated up to my six and a half cups of water for my very light syrup, I'm going to add three quarters of a cup of sugar. Um, and then I'm just going to stir that up uh, so that it, it gets nice and mixed. Um, now one thing I will do to help keep the color of my peaches kind of nice and bright is once they're packed in the jar that I'll do here in a moment, I will add a small amount of citric acid again. So remember that citric acid is this white powder that you can add um, to help preserve the peach color in the while you're uh, processing them or cutting them um, up. So, by doing that in the jar, it'll help preserve um, the color in the jar as well. Um, and I won't be adding much more than a tea, uh, just a teeny amount to each, just a quarter of a teaspoon, the smallest amount to each one. That way, um, it just is kept looking nice and neat. Um, and we always want to have things. So, now that this has heated up a little bit, I'm going to start taking some of them out and um, then putting some jars together of our uh, peaches. And you'll see that there's a little bit of condensation, which helps me know that it's that they're um, they have a, a good amount of um, sterilization to them. And then I have a handy dandy funnel that I'll just put right in the in the jar. And now. I am using my spider um, here to then just scoop them right from our, uh, scoop the peaches right from our liquid juice um, right into our jar. Um, now you'll see that we can actually have them push down just a little bit. When we push them down slightly, they will compress a bit and then I will add um, just a, a slice or two more, um, but I want to make sure I leave enough head space that it can seal well. Um, so that's, uh, let me see if I can find one more smaller one to kind of go in there. There we go. And so now at this point, I'm going to arrange them kind of nicely. And what I'm going to do now is then take before I put the liquid in, I'm going to just take um, the quarter teaspoon citric acid okay, and just put it right on top. And then I can have it mix in with the solution. 
the sugar water solution. Um, that way it's, it kind of just mixes all in and on its own. So now using my ladle, I'm going to take the sugar, solu sugar water solution, the light syrup, and again I'm going to make sure that my um, funnel is in my jar, uh, and I'm just going to ladle in the amount um, that will allow me to have space at the top. And in my case, the ladle I have, it's just about one full ladle um, to get the head space I need. Now, once this is all done, once it's all uh, done canning um, in, the, in, the, in the canner, um, you're going um, to have a lot more water down here. There's going to be pressure pulling the peaches up to the top. So that's okay. So when, it's, when this comes out of the canner, it's going to look a little different, which is fine. But now, I'm going to take... Um, I'm going to also have my lids okay, on that I'm going to sterilize a little bit and I'm going to put that on my on my jar. So now once this is canned I can put it back in here and do the rest of my jars. So remember we want to make sure that our lids, our, our rims are sterilized so I'm just going to take a little bit of a paper towel and wipe around the edge of the lid to make sure it's all clean and neat to ensure a good seal. Then what I'm going to do is just take my lid, my um, handy dandy um, sterilized lids and just now that I have both parts, the flat part and the metal part, I'm going to put it right on my jar. Then I'm going to twist and put it back here to ke help keep warm so that I can make sure that once it's going down in the canner, it'll be all set to go. Okay, so now that we've gotten all of our jars taken care of, we're gonna now process them. And so for half pints, or actually for these are full pints, these pints will be processed for 25 minutes in the water bath canner. If you put them in quart jars, they would be processed or boiled uh, for 30 minutes. So now that we have this taken care of, I'm going to make sure they're all yeah, securely under the water. Um, if you need extra water to make sure that there's, they're fully covered, have some by your side so you can put more in. You want to make sure that there's enough water covering the tops to ensure proper sealing. So I'll add a little bit more. Um, I'd rather have a little bit more water than less just to make sure. But now I'm gonna take this, put the lid on, and put my timer on for 25 minutes. So once that comes out, I'll show you what they look like. And then we can be on to our next step. So now this has been done for 25 minutes. The water bath canner is all sorts of done. I'm gonna turn it off, and I'm gonna turn off the propane as well. Because it, the directions are to take it off the heat, in this case, I'm just turning off the flame, and it's going to let it sit for five minutes. And then I'll take them out of the water bath and put them on my prepared space. Generally speaking, I put my canned goods, whether it's peaches or jams or salsas, I always put it on a towel so that it has a little cushion room and it doesn't, um, it doesn't, I guess, go right to the surface of whatever I'm putting on. In this case, it's a folding table. It could be your countertop. So I, didn't, <clears throat> I generally put um, something down as a cushion between my canned items and the surface I put them on. But now that we're going to go on to our next item, our next item we're going to make today is jam. We're going to make some peach jam. But something to be aware of is that with jam, there's a difference between jam and jelly. Jam usually has more of the fruit within the product. Jelly is generally the liquid and it's clear, has a little, you can see through it a little bit more. I like the, the jam just because of this consistency and it has more of the fruit in it. And so that's what we're going to make today with the peaches. But also, um, these are going to be put in um, half pint jars similar to these. Um, and so 
these are just the smallest jars that we can can in that I know of. Um, and so you can see that these are wide mouth. Uh, we'll probably have some other ones as well, just for difference. Um, and I'll be actually giving some of these as Christmas gifts. So we'll have more of a diverse looking jars, but that's okay. Sometimes we do. Um, but when, as we're making jam, something to consider is pectin. Now, most jams and jellies will require pectin, whether it's in powdered form or liquid. In this case, this is Ball brand, um, Real Fruit Classic Pectin. There are also um, some other options. There's Sure Gel Pectin, and they offer their original and a low sugar one. Now, uh, nowadays, there's a lot of people who are concerned about the amounts of sugar that they have. And with the recipes, <coughs> excuse me, that I'll include below, that's from the OSU Extension Service, uh, or Oregon State University Extension Service, those particular, that particular recipe for jam, for peach jam, ha asks for um, four pounds or about four cups of fruit to about seven cups of sugar. And that seemed like a lot to me, and when I tried it out, it was fairly sweet. But um, in different other recipes, like Sure Gel has a different recipe, and Ball has yet another recipe with some different amounts of sugar to fruit ratios. Um, but So you may want to look around at recipes first before you decide which one to use and which one's good for you. Um, one thing that Sure Gel does mention, um, maybe sure the Sure Gel one or the Ball, I forget now which one, but one of those two also mentions that if you want to use a sugar substitute, uh, you can do that. Uh, but you don't want to use no sugar um, for canning. Now you can make a jam or jelly without sugar, but you can't uh, can it or, or put it aside. Um, it, it will go bad. So you can make it without sugar. There are freezer jam options that you can put in your freezer or you can make it without sugar but then refrigerate it and then it will be as good as as long as it can be in the refrigerator I would guess probably not much more than a month that's probably pushing it probably just two weeks or so so in this next part be careful about reading the directions I'm gonna go with the sure gel low sugar recipe on this one and that recipe will be in the box um, that you get this product that, that comes with, with this product. So we're going to be off to that next spot. So welcome back to our last segment. And just to show you how our peaches turned out, so this is our canned peaches. I'm really kind of excited about how they turned out and it was really great to hear the little pink as the lids showed or told me their seal. Um, and so yeah, as you can see, there's some extra fluid on the bottom as it shifted. So they're basically Anytime you can peaches or pears, you'll see something of this liquid on the bottom. Sometimes you might see it with salsa or certain types of tomato sauce, and that's okay. If you see that, it just means that the items that you've canned have gained pressure and have gone up. So that's all, and hopefully they'll stay nice and yellow like this throughout the season as I have them on my shelf. So the next portion, as I mentioned before, that we're going to work on is peach jam and we'd gone over the different types of jam, um, pectin that you could use I've decided to use um, the sugar the what's called um, for use in less or no sugar needed recipes now remember that if you use no sugar that's okay but you're gonna not can it like I am tonight or here today so um, what you're gonna do is you're gonna set it aside in your jars and maybe put it in your refrigerator or somewhere aside that you'll use it sooner than you might use it otherwise. Um, when we have it canned on our shelves and put in the canner like this or in a pressure canner, it can your canned items can usually last a year or even up to 18 months. So that's why I want to make sure that you understand that the way we're doing this tonight or in this video, um, we will be using jam to preserve for the next year. But in this part, I'm just using the directions that had come in um, in the box. This had come folded in the box. 
And what they are saying for peach jam is to have four pounds peaches and one pound lemon, or one lemon. Um, and then it says to peel, pit, and finely chop peaches. Um, and then to have four and a half cups finely chopped peaches, two tablespoons fresh lemon juice, and three cups sugar. Um, so we actually have just that amount. So um, what we're going to do is we're, it's going to then make five cups of um, five cups of uh, jam. So now that I have everything laid out, I hope correctly, <laughs> I'm going to add um, first the prepared fruit. And so in this case, um, what I've done is I've taken some of our sliced peaches and just put them right in a blender and it said to process finely. And so this was one of the options. So I just took my processed peaches and I'm pouring it four and a half cups into my pan. To that, I'm going to add my uh, two tablespoons of lemon juice. So the two tablespoons of my lemon juice that I'm going to shake a little bit to make sure that it's all distributed, all the stuff is distributed well. And again, the lemon juice doesn't necessarily affect the flavor. Um, it helps with uh, the acidity in the jam to help it can well. So and have one, two tablespoons, and that we're gonna mix. I should put this back on. So we're gonna mix that up, and we're gonna make sure that we have the heat going. So at this time, I'm gonna start up my propane burners. And I'm going to have the, the canning jars again in my pot sterilizing as it as that water heats up. Now, this is going to be the trickiest of the three items that we're making today. The frozen peaches and then the canned peaches are fairly, fairly easy to make. The easiest being the frozen. The next in line, that would be the next hardest, you might say, is the canned. And this is a, the third hardest, you might say. Not that it's all that difficult, but we have to be patient with it and kind of make sure that it doesn't burn on us and it can be challenging sometimes. So once we have this heated up, we wanna make sure that we also take our sure gel and mix that with a quarter of a cup of the sugar we have set aside. So this is how our sure gel uh, looks. And again, we wanna make sure our peaches are um, are on low temperature right now. Is it, I don't know if you heard, but it just started to boil and bubble, and I was like, hey, we don't want that. So we're gonna take our sure gel, and I'm just gonna put it in another measuring container. And I'm gonna take about a quarter of a cup from my pre-measured amount and mix it together. And that was courtesy if you heard a run through, that was my dogs. <laughs> They're out to get the squirrel. Um, so now that I have uh, my clear gel and my sugar together, I'm going to mix that together. Uh, we want to, we don't want to have it too, um, we want to make sure that it gets mi mixed throughout our fruit mixture evenly so that it can get be well distributed. So just as a little tip, if you'd like, if you'd like to have less foam at the end of our processing of, of our jam, you can add a little bit of butter. That actually helps reduce the amount of foam that you'll have. Just add half a teaspoon of butter to help reduce the foam at the end. But at this point, now that you have the lemon juice and the and the fruit in, in our pan, first you're going to add the um, main batch of sugar. And you're going to combine that with the fruit. And again, you want to make sure that it has uh, even, it's been evenly distributed and then as that's all nice and mixed up and you'll be able to feel when it's actually really well mixed so now that we have the sugar really well mixed in in with the peach puree that I did before um, I'm gonna add the remainder of the sugar and uh, the clear gel mix that we just did And as we get that nice and all that in there, 
Um, again, we're going to make sure that it gets mixed really well because if we don't distribute it evenly, it will not cook right. And we want to make sure that we have um, everything well distributed. Um, because in the end, what we're going to do is we're going to look. You could use a candy thermometer or a, a thermometer to help get to a certain temperature. But what we're going to use tonight is a means of we're going to see how the how our jam sheets off our spatula. And that will help indicate um, how it will set up. And now if you don't let it set properly, it'll end up being syrup. So if it doesn't set well, that's okay. You can still use this as a, like a peach syrup. It will be just a little runny, um, but it'll still taste good. So um, as we continue to mix this, I'm finding little chunks at the bottom that I'm trying to mix in well. So you want to make sure the, the little globules of sugar and or clear gel that we find are actually fully mixed in. Um, and again, this is a lower sugar um, jam. Uh, it, 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 it's about two, two cups shorter or two cups less sugar than some other uh, jam recipes that I found. Um, I just felt like, you know, I didn't want to have more sugar than fruit if possible. Now at this point, what we're going to do is we're going to have this come to a full rolling boil. We want to make sure that it fully boils so that it allows everything to kind of coagulate and perk. And then we're going to, once it at, it's at a full rolling boil for up to one minute, um, we're going to take it off and let it sit for a moment. Um, but as you can see, it's not sheeting. You can see how it's kind of rolling off the edge of my spatula. What we're going to do is look for sheeting and when it sheets it'll slowly start to drop um, off the off the spatula and it won't just roll off. So right now um, we'll see how the the fruit mixture is kind of rolling off my spatula and so it's clearly too thin and that's okay but it's also not come to a full boil yet. So once it does do a full boil, it'll be fine. Uh, it's starting to slowly percolate around the edges, uh, but it's not quite there yet. And I could turn up the heat slightly, but again, I don't want to get it too hot or too fast um, just for the sake of burning. I don't want it to burn on the edges. As we see, it's starting to, it's starting to come together a little bit, but it's still very thin. As you can see, this is our mix. And as you saw, our mix wasn't quite boiling yet, but it's still trying. It's still trying to heat up. And it's trying to come together a little bit. And when I had done this just last week, um, I found that my peach jam didn't didn't solidify because I didn't do this right. So that's why we want to make sure that this properly boils to then get um, fully gelled as a jam or jelly. Um, so if you don't do that again, it's okay. Um, we can, in, in our house, we call it syrup. <laughs> but we want to make sure that it gets nice and um, boiling. As you can see here, it's starting to change a little bit. And you can see on the edges how it's starting to boil. So as you see the foam coming, that's what you're going to later skim off because you're not going to want that in your actual jars. So as you saw, it's starting to, starting to boil and change shape, so to speak. And it is taking a little bit of time, but like I said, that's what really makes this this item maybe the hardest of the three we're doing in this video, that it just takes time to get this to boil. Um, and hopefully, by the time this is all finished, it'll be well worth the time. And when we have it in, in our quart jars or in half pint jars, actually with this we probably wouldn't put in quart jars, 
unless you have a family that really likes it in quart size. <laughs> um, we'll more than likely put this in half pints um, with maybe a one pint jar um, on the outside. So as this is coming along, it's still rather thick, but it's now boiling. It's officially boiling. So now that this is boiling, we're going to time it for one minute. So now that it's boiling, you want to make sure that it keeps it keeps coming together. And I'm going to actually turn down the heat to help bring it down a little bit um, because it's we don't want it to overflow. You can see on this side of the spatula that it's starting to kind of stick at the bottom. So we want to make sure that it doesn't stick on the bottom of the pan. So now that it's been a minute, I've turned it off. I've turned off the heat and we can see that it's started to rest and it's actually thickened up a fair amount. And so that's a good thing. Um, so as we let this rest, um, we're going to take the foam off the top and put it in a separate in a separate container because that's not something that we're going to put in our jars to can. So had we added butter to this, a half teaspoon of butter, we probably wouldn't have had as much foam. But when I've done that in the past, there still was some foam. So it's up to you what you feel like doing. Um, today we didn't, I chose not to do that. But I will take off the foam. And that's something that in our house we'll use for the next couple days on our toast and other things. Um, we may even use it in cookies. So it's even the foam is still good to use in some things. Um, but it's just something we won't use in our actual canned jelly or gem. Um, and this, this I'm kind of excited about because it's actually smelling really good now. I can smell the fresh peaches and um, having it all come together is really kind of nice. So once we get the, jam, the foam off, we're going to immediately put it in the jars. And again with the jars, we're using half pints and I'm going to use some different different shaped ones than we've probably had before. And that's okay. If you have different size or different shapes, that's perfectly fine. Um, but the thing is, you're going to want to make sure, as we have before, that your jars and your lids are clean and sanitary. Um, otherwise, they may not seal properly and or they may um, contaminate the product that you just so, um, you took so much care to make. So as I'm taking this foam, all this foam off. We're almost done. Okay, and this is pretty good. Um, so as we go through this, we can see that it's, it's thickened up a bit. It's kind of nicely coming together. But this is when we're going to um, put it in our, in our jelly jars. Um, so, we're going to take off... Um, our canning lids, or our, um, can our lid to our canner. And what I'm going to do now, too, is again heat up our canning lids um, like I've done before. So we want to make sure the water's all boiling. And so that's why I have some here that I am putting in. I'll boil that. You know, I'm actually really kind of excited about this. This is kind of the this is kind of the fun part of, of canning, I think. There we go. So, as we get this going, again, I'm going to try to use my cleanest of things that I can. And now that I have my, my jam here, you can kind of see that it's it's just setting up. It's got a little bit of a little bit of a film on it, which is okay for now. Um, and I'm going to use some of these half pint jars that are wide mouth, which is just fine. And we're going to leave enough headspace in each of these, like we do with our other canning items, 
um, so that there isn't so there, there's room for it to kind of breathe and essentially I'm going to use my handy dandy ladle again to ladle in um, my my jam and as I do that you'll see it just pouring in nicely and in this case I have I'll use just over a full just over um, a ladle of um, jam in each jar we want to make sure that the um, that you can see that there's headspace there for things to breathe again I'm going to take my um, handy dandy napkin in the water and take a little bit and run it around the rim of my jam um, so then when I put the the uh, lid on it has a nice clean seal so now off to the next one to get them all back in the water cap bet water bath canner so as our last one is being filled it looks like we'll have a little bit left over and so I'm going to try to add a little bit I can um, to each set, each uh, can. Um, I'm going to add a little bit left to each jar, I should say. And the remainder that I have, I'm going to put in a, a jar and we'll use that uh, more readily. Uh, so that way it doesn't go bad um, and it can still get used in an easy amount of time. So I'm going to use this last uh, pint pint jar for the remaining jam that I have and you can do that if you like and this one since it's not being um, canned you can be a little bit you might say a little bit more careful careless with it um, and kind of make sure that what is left gets in there um, and this is when you're gonna make sure the edges are all taken into account that the jam that's on the edges gets to be scraped in um, because if you uh, leave it there it'll be harder to clean up in the end while the jam is in the canner I just wanted to make sure the canning time for half pints on jam according to the recipe in the sure gel box is actually just 10 minutes so make sure that you look at the directions because it could change depending on what you're making Hey there, so just as a review from what we did today, um, we were able to do three different things. We were able to can to freeze some peaches, we were able to can peaches, and we are able to make some peach jam, which I'm kind of excited about. It's still nice and warm from the canner, and it's been out for a little while. So now, all we have to do is put the dates and the contents on the top of the lids, and we're all set. So, with that in mind, today we're able to do three items for one product. We're able to have a couple of different things to have in our food storage. So, every time you come to think about what you enjoy eating and have on your shelves, make sure you think of the things that you do want. If you're not interested in frozen peaches, but you like canned peaches or, or uh, jam, then just make those. But if you don't like those things, maybe you could do the same thing with pears. You can freeze pears, you can can pears, you can make a pear jam. You can do the same process with another item. And when you get the chance to go to different farms, take that chance. In this case, I was able to get a good deal through Dietering Orchards. And it was a great opportunity because I was able to go do you pick one week with someone. But then when I came back this week, I was able to do... a uh, purchase because they had already picked it for me and it was actually a little bit better deal. So sometimes when you work with the different local farmers you can find out their local sales and then get a really good deal on things. So um, if you get the opportunity to go to a local farm to you please try to do that because it's always good to support your local farmer. So thank you so much for coming today and learning how to do peaches three different ways. And I look forward to seeing you again. If you get the chance to subscribe, if you haven't yet already, click the subscribe button. And there will be uh, several links below so you can check out um, the OSU Master Food Preservers uh, website for the peach, some of the peach um, preserving we did today, along with uh, the Sure Gel um, recipe that we use for our jam. You can check out that online as well. 
So thanks again for stopping by, and I hope you have a great day.